Come on and shine, shine, shine. Las Vegas, shine your light on me. Welcome to Las Vegas Tonight. Join award-winning host Dale Davidson as he interviews the most remarkable people you'll find in the entertainment capital of the world. You'll meet entertainers, sports figures, newsmakers, community and business leaders, and people just like you with stories that'll touch your heart. Now, here's Dale Davidson. Welcome to Las Vegas Tonight. I'm your host, Dale Davidson. Each and every week, we bring you a very special guest. We've outdone ourselves this time, direct from Hollywood, Terry Ivins. Terry, thanks for joining oh, us. Oh, it's my pleasure, yeah, Dale. Thank you. Uh, many people will recognize you, I'm sure, from uh, motion pictures that you've done and and uh, and of course uh, all my children you, you were on that for quite a few oh, years oh our beloved you? story of yeah. abc all my children i know there's many yeah. who probably still miss it today you shot that in new york i did yeah and then it went through a course where the whole show to save the show uh brian franz who was the head of abc daytime at the time moved the show to la to try to save it and curb costs because oh, okay. really a lot of the costs were done because of studio as right, we know yeah, studio sure, costs are outrageous sure. and in new york sure. everything's built up yeah. so you can't build out so they had to change the sets almost every single night for wow. different stories so wow, you yeah, know yeah. so it got very costly tell me about what it was like i understand that that being an actress or an actor in uh, soap operas hard work um, it it's, is isn't it it's uh, tough because it's so fast-paced uh, right. the best way I can put it to explain it quickly is like a commercial it's 15 30 seconds and they can spend three or four days to shoot it oh, yeah, sure. whereas with daytime we've got 90 pages to do every single day Wow! right prime time so just 90 through. pages and they'll take four or five days to shoot it right. so we were, we got to be where if we're in a, a pumping it out every scene would take about 15 minutes from top to bottom that's fast. Right, camera blocking running oh, it wow. shooting it so to be on your toes and memorize quickly and really just listen to yeah. you know your co-star sure because if they go off the page you better go with them <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. i've totally forgotten what the next line is but i'm gonna feed you something so you better <laughs> think of what you're gonna say well you know and sometimes you do it on purpose like mikey Just knight throng, yeah. right who yeah. played tad and i got to work opposite him for a few years which was just glorious because he was so funny yeah. so he would off the cuff just tangent <laughs> and you know I loved it so yeah. I just be right there with him and try to outdo him sure, you know <laughs> sure. that you, you throw him a line saying now do something with that one right. you know uh, let's talk about your childhood a little bit if you don't mind oh, I um, you. you were born in the uh, LA area but you spent some time here in Nevada tell me about that I did I actually went to second grade at Lewis E. Rowe Elementary School here Wow. Yeah, Yay. went to St. Viter's Church. Okay, sure. Uh, where there was a Father Bear, which I was so young, but I remember Father Bear because who, who could forget that name? Yeah, that's great. right. Yeah. Uh, my mom was devout Catholic, and it was during the time period when the Catholic Church was very open to the charismatic movement that was right. happening in the sure. 70s. So Father Bear actually led my mom to find the Lord as her personal. Savior. And she became born again. Born in the again Church. through the Catholic yeah. Church. And yeah. I went through my catechism through the Catholic Church mm -hmm. with not learning the Hail Mary. Wow. I know. That's the, basic. I know. Yeah. I still just I have no idea because they were like, you know, Jesus is the way and the power, and there's no reason. Yeah. If, if your father, because my dad wasn't a Catholic, didn't want me to learn it, then they were like, then that's fine. Wow. But I still got to go through catechism full bore and that's have the great. wafer. And the grape juice. <laughs> Do the whole thing. Do the whole thing. Uh, you moved up to Reno from, from Vegas? We did. did we did. My dad was in show business. Oh, okay. He was a rock drummer, played behind uh, Freddie Fender, oh, Mac sure. Davis, played throughout uh, Las Vegas with a show band called uh, The Leland Four. Oh, okay. And so that's, that's how insane. I stayed yeah. with the show towns mm -hmm. because we wanted to see our, you know, our dad a little more often. Mm -hmm. So we moved to Reno because my dad loves to ski 
being raised in Michigan, yeah. and oh, sure. uh, the four seasons of Reno, Lake Tahoe area are uh, fabulous, and that's where I grew up. Yeah, it's a it's a be it's a beautiful place and a nice little town. It was speaking. really little when yeah. I was little. It's not so little now. No, it isn't. It's yeah. like getting bigger and bigger. Like we never had to lock our doors, cars yeah. or fronts. Yeah. You yeah. know, I'm sure it's changed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's everything has changed, right? as you well know. Um, talk to me a little bit about about uh, your growing up years and your teen years, because that's going to play into your book, which mm. we're going to talk about, and I'm going to hold up in a second. Um, but you're an author as well. Tell me about uh, why did you decide to write a book called The Buzz, Pointing Fingers? Mm. I, uh, I wanted to leave something behind for my 10-year-old daughter, a sort of how-to maneuver through the most difficult time in all of our lives, adolescence. Mm -hmm. God forbid, if anything were to happen to me, that there would be this manual, so to speak. But it's a novel. But yeah. it's a novel, yeah. and it's uh, there'll be five books in, in its completion. Oh, okay. This is the first one, mm -hmm. and uh, it's based very roundly on some of my uh, personal experiences at the mm -hmm. same age. My my lead character is fourteen at the beginning of this book. Mm -hmm. And just starting in high school. Just starting high school, first Terrifying day. Time. Terrifying time, yeah, right? I'm sure. Big school. 14, you know, mm -hmm. different middle schools all clashing together, mm -hmm. just all new. Yeah. Um, this is uh, kind of a serious question, but something I've noticed, and, and I know very little about raising girls because I have four sons and five grandsons, so we, we apparently don't have <laughs> whichever chromosome you need for girls. We put it in order, though, with, with my kids to make sure that they produce a, a granddaughter for us. But um, something happens to girls in middle school. Um, in the early years, in elementary school, and from you know kindergarten on until about maybe seventh grade, somewhere in there, the girls are the leaders. The girls have developed faster than the boys. The girls seem to be better students and even better athletes. Uh, and they seem to be supremely self-confident. And then, you know, when puberty hits, mm -hmm. it all goes south, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, that that uh, uh, self confidence goes away. What's the story behind that? Why does that happen? Are girls doing this to each other? Is that why the self confidence and I think it's cross gender. You know, I think boys yeah. go through it too. What I think is that even in our adulthood, we get so caught up in what is the right answer or how should I do this or what are people thinking and how will I be judged that we forget that, that it's so simple no matter what it is that we're facing what question it is that we need to solve it's either love-based or fear-based and in our adolescence so much of it is fear-driven you know we don't know how we're supposed to dress mm -hmm. everything is like oh I don't want to oh I wouldn't be caught dead wearing that you know I don't want to hear what so-and-so is going to say on at Monday on sc at school right, you yeah, know yeah. Um, it, so it being anxiety anxieties of that yeah. and and I know you know I I I'm concerned as a mother with my 10 year old to and you know who knows it's really in God's hands what our relationship is going to be as, as she sure. matures but I catch myself now at at her being 10 when I'm just tired and she's yapping because girls like to talk <laughs> and I want to go Shh, my gosh you know yeah, yeah. zip it woman you know yeah, and, yeah. and I catch myself and go remember you are building your friendship and relationship that will last if you don't snap at her now she's not going to anticipate you snapping at her when it's the most vital time for you to listen that's interesting so yeah. I don't know if I'm on to something good but I like what my daughter and I are building together and it's me zipping it and just listening to whatever it is and it's it's the same issues as what I know I wrote of in high school and here she's in fourth grade and it's 
oh, look how so-and-so commented on my Instagram. And I'm on her Instagram, too, and I look, and no joke today, I was like, mm-hmm, at Amy. You know, I really wish you were a nice girl. Hashtag mean girls are ugly. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm oh, sure I'm going to get a call from a parent. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I want to talk some more about mean <laughs> girls and, and what, they, what they do to each other. Mm. Um, we need to take a brief break. We'll be back with Terry Ivins right after these messages. Drawn by the lights, glamour, and opportunities in Sin City, they come from all over the world, searching for their chance to be a pretty woman, a success, or maybe just to have a better life. Be somebody. What happened after they got here is literally changing the world. From the story of Tommy Scott, a former gang enforcer turned Christian evangelist, to the Hookers for Jesus Outreach Ministry, to the heart-wrenching story of Arturo Martinez and his heroic act of forgiving the man who assaulted and murdered his wife and 10-year-old daughter. Las Vegas Tonight presents an extraordinary depiction of Las Vegas as a city of transformation from Sin City to Vegas Saints. Las Vegas Tonight, from Sin City to Vegas Saints, a collection of true stories of transformation, people whose lives were transformed and people who are now transforming the world. Welcome back. I'm Dale Davidson, your host of Las Vegas Tonight. We're very pleased to have Terry Ivins with us. She's an actress, she's a producer, she's a singer-songwriter. <laughs> I don't know. She's everything. Yeah, my sister would be like, excuse me, that would be me, <laughs> not my sister. <laughs> Tell me about your sister. Uh, my sister, my thorn in my side. Of no. course. <laughs> Of course. We all That's have what siblings are for. Right? Drive each other she nuts. She is the most amazing talent musically. Yeah. Songwriter. She, yeah. she sang uh, back up for Elton John. Wow, that's not nothing. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, she coins the uh, the corner on the, the talent yeah. market yeah. in the music department. But my whole family is musically inclined. I sing as well, but songwriter, yeah, no. Nah, nah, nah. nah. But you are a writer. And I the am. book's called The Buzz Pointing Fingers. I'm going to hold that up so you get an idea. If that's, I really like the uh, artwork. Thank you Lockers so much. Lockers and all that sort of thing. I cannot take credit. My 10-year-old daughter, Kiana Osgood, came up with that. Really? She picked it out. Wow. On the way to school one morning, I, I said, Kiana, I need you. There's three photos. I'm like, which one do you want to touch? Without hesitation, she's like, that one. I'm like, thank you. That's all I need from you today. <laughs> Done. And then she came home yeah. from school, and I had interior and cover designers, and they came up with all these different things, lettering and fonts. Oh, yeah. And Kiana yeah, was like, it needs to be graffiti. Too. And I'm like, excellent. Oh, yeah. And we didn't go backwards. We stuck oh, yeah. with what our ideas were. And you've got photos. I Again, turned right to the freshman stud hill. <laughs> right? That's true. That really was. They're the guys. The, uh, the joke that the seniors meant became the freshman pride. Wow. Yeah, we were all so scared we'd all congregate together at lunch, sure, right? Sure, sure. What was it like in the 80s going to high school? Well, How was it different than before or after? Was well, it I only a crazy know. time? Was it a... Well, was I think everybody? it was the best of times because it was before busing was ever invented. Mm -hmm. So if you were zoned for a school, that's where you went. And very few people ever got variances, as they used to call them. Right. And uh, if you did, it was because you were an outstanding athlete and you know the richer yeah. neighborhood wanted you for their team. Mm -hmm. But other than that, you really stayed inside your communities. So the communities got behind it, and especially in Reno, you know, we had every high school had a casino that backed it. So Oh, Our right. education wow. was very rich. Everybody wow. had football stadium lights, mm -hmm. you know. Everyone had new books. Everyone mm -hmm. had new uniforms. Wow. So it was wow. it's wonderful to grow up in a state that's rich, yeah. you know, doesn't have state tax. Sure. I'm like, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. why doesn't everyone follow suit? Sure. You know, sure. take care of your own. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know, the 80s we had already, you know, got the hostages back. You know, remember? Yeah. With from the, the Iran. 1981, that happened. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Reagan was in office. Right. He just started the trickle down theory of Reaganomics, so mm -hmm. everyone had more cash in their pockets. Mm -hmm. I think the American dream had just rebirthed that you truly could do and be anything you wanted to if you just showed up. Mm -hmm. Just show up and work hard mm -hmm. and you can do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm really a product of that type of education. I never thought for a moment that I wouldn't get to do what I love to do. Now, in the same breath, my father raised me that being a success is doing, making a living, doing whatever it is you love to do. Right. So he didn't care what profession I chose, just love to do it because he said most people hate getting up in the morning to go do whatever it I is. They say about 80 percent. Right? Yeah. So if we have that choice and realize it when we're younger, what is it that we want to do? Mm -hmm. And go pursue that. I don't know. Reagan was right in my count. Oh yeah, he's my hero. Mm -hmm. I, I had the chance to work work directly for him. Really? In the 80s, yeah. Oh. yeah I wrote words that came out of Reagan's <gasps> book. So, how oh, exciting is that? That is amazing. Yeah. So, did you know you wanted to be an actress back back then, back when you were in high school? I wanted to be a recording artist, actually. Oh, you did? Huh. Yeah, but I did nothing about it. <laughs> and when I was 16, uh, I turned 16, uh, Amy Grant, uh, was oh, sure. just budding, right? And she had her first album when she was 16, so I figured, well, then I will too. But if you don't show up or do the work or tell anyone like your father who's in the business that it. you have this dream, yeah. nothing happens. And yeah. my 16th birthday, I was wallowing in my self-pity in the dark in my bedroom, and my dad was like, why are you so upset? And I'm like, I'm a failure. I wanted to be a recording artist, and he's like, wow, why didn't you say something? <laughs> I could have helped you. Right? Yeah, yeah. But then you, you segued from that into acting. I started doing theater in right. my high school at Hug High, where yeah. is my setting in my first book, right. Proctor R. Hug. Mm -hmm. I had a wonderful drama teacher, Eve Loomis, and she put uh, put me in the first musical, Little Abner. Wow, that's a great and show. And I sang in the choir. There you course. go, that's a great show. Uh, we need to take another brief break. I want to talk about uh, your early career and uh, and about uh, Miss Junior Miss Nevada. Yes, yeah. yeah. We'll be back with Terry Ivins right after this. A potential audience of more than 50 million people is reached every week by Las Vegas Tonight. To keep the important message of Christ's love on the air, we need your prayers and financial blessings. Please send your tax-deductible gift to Dale Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. For a donation of $25 or more, we'll send you a copy of Dale Davidson's new book, Las Vegas Tonight, From Sin City to Vegas Saints. You'll love these inspiring stories of Las Vegas Christians who are changing the world, or donate to the ministry, or order Dale's book by going to vegasaints.org. That's vegasaints.org. Or call us today at 702-480-3989. That's 480-3989. God bless you. And welcome back to Las Vegas Tonight. I'm your host, Dale Davidson. We're pleased to have Terry Ivins, former Nevada girl. <gasps> yes, yes, Who's yes. now in, in Hollywood. Uh, speaking of Nevada girl, tell me about being Junior Miss Nevada. What was that like? You know, it was so rewarding because it's one of the few scholars, scholarship programs that really? are given to girls. I mean, if it's not Miss America, then you're it's Junior. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was Nevada's Junior Miss of 85. How old were you? I just turned 18. Okay. And I went to nationals in Mobile, Alabama. Bruce Jenner was our host. Wow. He had just been donned uh, <coughs> Father of the Year. Wow. Right? <laughs> That's kind of hard to imagine now. Isn't right? It? With all these young, late 17, 18 year yeah, old girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and gosh, I, I got third runner up overall. I won talent singing God wow. Bless America, my wow. rendition of. And uh, between winning craft scholarships and Revlon scholarships, I walked away with a little over 25 grand. That's big money then. Big money, and that's how I got to Hollywood. I had agents that watched the telecast on CBS, 
and I said I was going to UCLA. So they called, and I had the uh, support of America's Junior Miss, and they actually used my scholarship to pay for acting classes. As long as I was a full-time student, they believed Terry's not going to be a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's further where she's going to grow yeah. and mature. That's great. And so, you know, now if I go back to the, the program, the, the, you know, everyone is, you know, Sodom Sum Cum Laude or whatever they call it. I'm setting Los Angeles on fire. There I'm like go. a pyro. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's funny. So overall, it was a, a good experience for you. It was wonderful. Yeah. What, were you, what were you studying at UCLA? I didn't ended up not going. Oh, you didn't go? Oh, okay. No. I could make my money go farther if I went to a state school. So oh, I went okay. to CSUN and Cal State Fullerton first. Oh, okay. And then I booked my first TV show with Matthew Perry called Boys Will Be Boys okay. on Fox when Fox just became a network. Wow. So I got to make that great grave phone call to my parents and say, I have to drop out of school. I got a TV series. Yeah. I promise I'll go back. Sure, sure you will. <laughs> sure you will. I never stopped working, Halloween. You know, it, it must be amazing to other actors who spend years and years and years trying to break in and trying to, you know, just get their first shot when there you are, bam, you've got it. You've got a role. Did you think it was an, an easy thing to become an actress? No, it was, you know, it seems boom, but there was two years leading up to it. Yeah. In between when I was, you know, Junior Miss was over and before I got my series where, right. you know, it was incredibly tough. Who Just because agents had flown me out didn't mean I was going to... Right, I still had to find a place to live. I still had to try to find a way to sure. feed myself. My mom would send me cat support. You know, because I brought my kitty cat with me. You know, <laughs> so I would live off the cat food. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> right? funny. Yeah, you know. Uh, no, like, people don't realize when they say, oh, an overnight success. No, she's or he has probably been beating the pavement for 15 years. Yeah, yeah. You know, and even in that regard that I'm so lucky to continue to work throughout this, what, almost 30 years, 25 plus years in the business, I'm still a fresh, unfamiliar face to many, but yet somehow God is a blessed, I can only give credit to God in this, that I have been able to make a living doing what I love to do, keeping my top on, not taking the Lord's name in vain, and not doing any cut him up thrasher movies, you know? Good for you. It's, it's, it's one of those weird mm -hmm. things. Do you, do you think now, and both of us have been active in Media Fellowship International, so there is, there is um, a Christian presence in Hollywood. Um, there seems to be more and more in the way of Christian movies, or at least PG movies, than there used to be. Um, are you encouraged? Do you feel good about what's going on in Hollywood? Uh, do you think it's better than it used to be, or is it about the same? What's your view there? I don't know. I mean, when I was young, I remember great Disney films all the time. Mm -hmm. We used to have the Disney Sunday night movie that came on our television, sure. and a lot of those avenues are no longer, yeah. you know, but there is a huge faith-based movement is what it's called from mm -hmm. a producer standpoint, where the, the country is really shouting out loud that they want inspirational stories, stories of triumph, stories of hope. They, they, they want stories that will affect their children in a positive light and give them that just that one more little oomph to be something better than they were yesterday. Yeah. So there's some great production companies that are formed that come up with this great content. Yeah, yeah, and some are subsidiaries of major studios. Absolutely, because cool they go thing. where the money is. They sure do. They understand that, don't they? Right? The yeah. power of the buck. Oh, yeah. It used to be the power of the pen. <laughs> but no longer. <laughs> no longer. We need to take another brief break. We're going to be back with Terry Ivins. We're going to talk about faith right after this. Hello, I'm Dale Davidson. I hope you're enjoying Las Vegas tonight. The guests we've had on the program are wonderful examples of Christians who take seriously Christ's command to love one another. In addition to the hundreds of television stations across the United States now carrying our show, 
we have been presented with the outstanding opportunity to bring these inspiring stories to people around the world. An international satellite network in the Russian and Ukrainian languages has asked us to provide them with episodes to be broadcast to millions. To make a gift to support this very special effort, please send your check or money order to Dale Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. To use your credit or debit card, call 702-480-3989. Thank you and God bless you. Welcome back to Las Vegas tonight. I'm your host, Dale Davidson. We're very pleased to have Terry Ivins with us. She's a terrific actress. She's written a book called The Buzz, Pointing Fingers. Here I am holding it up. Yes. Beautifully holding it very up. Very good. It's pretty new, isn't it? It is, literally, just hot off the press. Oh, that's great. Yes. And available on Amazon, Amazon.com, Barnes and Noble.com, oh. ebook. If you want an autographed copy, you can go to my own personal website, terryivans.com. Oh, and wow. And I have it all set up to where you just put in. I, there, because I have a heart for children, for kids, yeah. if it's personalized, it makes for a great gift. Yeah. So, you know, if it's, you know, to Jill, I really believe you can do it, Terry Ivins. It, I think it, it may inspire her to want to follow the series That's a great idea. throughout the time. That's a great idea. It, it lifts the responsibility level on my end. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I don't take that lightly at all. Yeah. Um, do you consider yourself to be a role model for for young girls? I wouldn't consider myself to be anything but saved and forgiven, you know. Uh, but I'm, I'll listen and I'll share my stories, and if it touches them because of where they're at, well, then now we're kindred sisters, you know. Yeah. Um, so I've got a lot of them. That's great. Um, let's talk about faith and, and the book. Do you, do you bring faith into the book at all? Well, I disguise it. No. I have two great characters. Mm -hmm. uh, one is called The Ugly Voice, and the other one is called The Still Small Voice. And they mm -hmm. talk mm -hmm. through my lead character, and which was quite challenging to put onto paper because I didn't want my lead character to seem schizophrenic because she's talking to herself, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So it, was, it took a little bit of clever of how to make them actual characters and have my publishers and my editors understand, wait, you know, these are actual characters, you know. Right. Uh, the ugly voice muttered madness. They're laughing at you, you know. It's right. your fault. And it's the things that even in my adulthood, I still will hear, you know, I, and it's those that, that fear-based stuff. Yeah, insecurities. Insecurities, yeah. and yeah. if those are real things that we all battle through, whether it's going for a job interview, whether it's sitting at a soccer game and, you know, everyone else has a certain kind of purse and you don't have that brand. You know, it's mm -hmm. the silliest things, but we get it wrapped up in our heads that, you know, we're being judged or we're not as good as, and that's that ugly voice muttering madness. Mm, that's Satan, it really is. He's got many names, yeah, doesn't he? he does, he sure does. Um, when you get an opportunity to witness, and let's, let's talk about um, girls your daughter's age and older, um, when you're listening, which you've made a real point of how that's the critically important thing as a mom to do Absolutely. and as a role model for girls, um, tell me what, you, what you're able to say to, to a girl who uh, hasn't found Christ, that doesn't know, uh, have a personal relationship with Jesus. Um, how, can you, how do you introduce that and how do you follow up? in discipleship. Do you get a chance to do that? Well, I think all of us have that opportunity. It's sometimes we don't recognize it. We miss the opportunity because we didn't see that the kids that keep coming over to the house, there's a reason why they keep coming, because they feel safe there. Mm -hmm. So choosing to be a parent, to say, yeah, come on, I take it a little further and don't want them around. 
I, they like to be where they're not wanted, so I kind of play the oh, opposite. You, you play a role. Right? I play the opposite. Or where I'm like, ah, gee, don't bother me. And then they just won't leave me alone. <laughs> right? right? And if they're telling me their stories, whatever's happening at school, I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Blah, 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 blah. And then they just keep telling me more. Oh, sure. So as soon as that door is open, humor and conversation is the groundwork of leading them down the good path, right? The old path where the good way is. And it's that simple. But we so often, we, we shut that door of communication because we're busy, we're tired. We've got so much else on our plate that we right. have to finish by the end of the day. Just leave me alone. I mean, these are things I battle with right. that I've said out of my own mouth that I choke back later right. and have to say, forgive me. Lord, help me not to do this again, uh, because it is truly fascinating how just having eye contact with a child, how they will just open up and they will lead where the conversation needs to go. They will ask the questions, uh, and then by your own example, by your own story, you'll move them. And have you led girls of this age to Christ? Have you had the opportunity to do it? I went on tour when I was 16, 17 years old with this group that was called Continental Singers. And we traveled, the, I was tour O, so we went to the Orient and all across the U.S. Wow. And I was part of the big band tour, so we had trombones and trumpets and <laughs> yeah. sax and everything. And I learned firsthand how to lead someone to Christ, really? the actual, you know, theologian type way. Step one, you do this. Step two, we show them the scripture. You know, John three sixteen. You better know that one. <laughs> and they, we wouldn't be able to get off the bus and have lunch if we didn't have certain scriptures memorized. Oh, okay. Which at sixteen, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I'm dying here. We're gonna just shove it in. I don't <laughs> know. I, you know. But it was such great training ground. Oh yeah. Because now, it just happens without even having to put it into any type of traditional thing. It's there. And I, I really think that children are so savvy and so smart in this day and age that they see through anything that is typical, that you must be original. And the only way is, like I said, conversation, eye contact, sharing your story. Yeah, I find that too. Uh, Tracks don't seem to work, you know, uh, going through the plan of salvation with, you know, kids my kids' age or, or younger, you know, even grandkids, they want authenticity more mm -hmm. than anything. Absolutely. And boy, can they spot phoniness. Oh, yeah. You know? They're looking for it. Yeah. Because yeah. they want to prove you wrong. Yeah. Why? Because they're a teenager and they have it all together. That's right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> So if, if we were right, my mom my dad is just such an idiot. Yeah. Oh, my! Yeah. I still I wrote a whole book about my mom being an <laughs> idiot. Oh. <laughs> we're gonna get back to your mom and dad in just a minute. Let's take another brief break. We'll be back with Terry Ivins right after this. Drawn by the lights, glamour, and opportunities in Sin City, they come from all over the world searching for their chance to be a pretty woman, a success, or maybe just to have a better life. Be somebody. What happened after they got here is literally changing the world. From the story of Tommy Scott, a former gang enforcer turned Christian evangelist, to the Hookers for Jesus Outreach Ministry, to the heart-wrenching story of Arturo Martinez, and his heroic act of forgiving the man who assaulted and murdered his wife and 10-year-old daughter. Las Vegas Tonight presents an extraordinary depiction of Las Vegas as a city of transformation from Sin City to Vegas Saints. Las Vegas Tonight, from Sin City to Vegas Saints, a collection of true stories of transformation, people whose lives were transformed, and people who are now transforming the world. Welcome back, I'm Dale Davidson. You're watching Las Vegas Tonight, and we have Terry Ivins, author of The Buzz, Pointing Fingers. There you go. Yay! Yay. And there's going to be five books in the series? Five books in the series. Tell me, tell me uh, 
a little bit about your your experience when you were a freshman in high school and about your parents. Ugh. Um, did you think they were complete complete idiots? <laughs> yeah, because you knew everything. Well, they were ridiculous. I mean, I know honestly they were ridiculous. Like I couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. My mom was too afraid that you know I was going to get into trouble if I ever left the house. So she was always like. Her name should have been No, because that's all she ever said yeah. was No. And my dad, if I could catch him at any time away from her, he would say yes. So learning he that, knew that, right? So learning that early, I would ask him as he was just dozing off to take a nap. You know, <laughs> dad, hey, would dad. It be okay if I right? Yeah. And he caught on to that pretty quick, and then that kind of ended. girls work their dads pretty well. Anyway. We work, but you know, you know, you got to find a way. So I would sneak out of my second story bedroom window. Did that when I was a kid. Too. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I push my car down the street, mm -hmm. hop in. When I get home really late, I coast it. I knew exactly when to turn off the car to pull it around so it would be silent. Yeah. Coast it back in, shimmy up the tree. But the fear of my mother flicking on the light when I crawled back in the window was so death defying that I quit sneaking out myself without yeah. ever being caught. Yeah. Because just the wrath of my mother was. You knew what was coming. Uh, it just every I started getting these like palpitations of like you know. She's going to kill. Yeah, me. just you know you maybe the first couple of times I thought oh yeah I'm cool, but then like the fourth time I'm like shaking like oh my gosh they're just she's just gonna turn off the lights now and I know <laughs> it. <laughs> you know? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's there funny. is something to be said with you know the evil eye. Now but, both parents were saved. Yeah. Yeah. And, and tell me a little bit about that. Your dad was able to he be was, a, a rock drummer yeah. and, and be a Christian at the same time? Yeah. Well, he got saved on the road. I really don't know what his story is. I should ask him. I just know that all of a sudden, any time that we were driving down the street, he would be like, one way, one way. And I'm like, what in the world are they doing? Yeah, yeah. You know, there was this whole movement, and I was just a little kid, and they would get so excited. The if Jesus someone had movement. a yeah. sticker with their finger up, they were like, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Way, yeah. I'm like, whatever, people, you're weird, yeah, you know? Yeah, but yeah, yeah so they, uh, my dad was saved first, and my mother thought that he was directly from Satan because she was Catholicism the whole way. Right. And uh, I don't even know why in the world they got married to begin with, but I guess they were, you know, sexually attracted to each other, that's which is needs happens. to be. Yeah. But uh, my, I guess my dad just prayed for my mom so much that he would, so that she would see the light and not hate him, and that God used the only means that my mother would receive a father in a Catholic church in Las Vegas, Nevada. Wow, wow. Father Bear at St. Vitus Church. Yeah. I mean, it's really remarkable. It's a great story. So your dad became a pastor, is that right? Yeah, he, uh, he left the road because I was getting older and starting to date. I remember calling my dad and asking if I could go steady when I was in the fifth grade. And shortly after that, he came off the road. Yeah, he said, like, <laughs> I better be home to supervise exactly. this. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And he uh, went back to school mm -hmm. and became the youth and music pastor at our church, Life Center Church at the time, wow. which is a sister church of Church on the Way. Oh, in, okay, sure. In sure. Uh, L.A. Yeah. That yeah. nice. And, and being a PK, what was that like? Uh, you were the, kid. Yeah, you're the first on the bus, last off the bus. You got all the toilet duties. Uh, it was horrible, really. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I. The only good thing about it is that because my dad was music and I loved to perform, that he created all these great um, choirs, youth choirs. So we had a Young Life Singers. Oh wow! Right, yeah. and we went and sang at Disneyland. In fact, that's where I celebrated my my sweet 16th birthday wow. with Mickey Mouse and Goofy giving me my cake at wow. the Carnation Plaza. Right, wow. so I mean, there's lots of great things about being a PK. Yeah. But I, you know, I just remember it was so much cooler saying my dad was a rock drummer than he's the youth and music pastor. It just for me, it was just a downhill slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not exactly what you even now what I don't lead with that. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did. My dad was a dr rock drummer. Oh yeah, and he was it's a ingrained. worship leader. Yeah, yeah. It's ingrained. Yeah. And, and there's no better card to ever pull than the kid card. I don't care how old you are. You know it. If you can ride your mom or dad's coattails, we do. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're here for. Hey. There you go. 
Um, but your your folks ended up splitting up. Is that what happened? They did. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was uh, it was shocking to me. But you know, God does not overstep our own wills, mm -hmm. and uh, I've seen it in my own life, and I witnessed it uh, inside my family. And uh, I, I wrote my dad this this birthday card, and in it, I can't really remember what I said. But my dad's return card to me was, "My my light has been relit in him because of you," and I remember that because my dad had come back to the Lord, and it was just a, a most momentous time. I, I didn't care if he was a pastor or anything. It was just that unknowing if I was, he, I was gonna see him in heaven. You know, when you're, right. my dad taught me everything I was supposed to know about God, and then all of a sudden one day says, oh, I, don't, I don't believe in it anymore. It's not that he didn't believe in it, he yeah. just liked this other lady, you know, so mm -hmm. he can't have God and this lady at the same time. So he had to rationalize it. Right, and she was the organ lady too. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. You know? That seems to happen all the time. It happens all the time. Yeah. You know, it's not, uh, it's not new, no. nor original, no. and it's a shame. But you know, it's because I do believe when our pastors and our leaders and our board of our churches, they're on the front line. And so many of us in the congregation, we look to them and use them to help us fill our needs. And how many times do we actually lift them up and gird them up in prayer? I know myself, I still fall short. You know, even to pr pray for the president, I, I, I don't really think about it until, you know, oh, it's an election time, you mm -hmm, know? Well. But in our own communities, you know, they're the front lines. They're wounded warriors yes, carrying the load. Mm -hmm. And so often it is, it is us sitting in the pews that are shooting the arrows. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were talking about that before the cameras rolled. You know, we're the uh, only religion that seems to shoot its wounded, you know? Right? Yeah, it's sad. It's sad, but we yeah. can make a change. Yeah. And it's just awareness. Yep. It's just awareness and being humble enough to know I'm not better than the next person. And, oh gosh, may I never be in that person's shoes. Yeah, and treat others the way that we're supposed to. Exactly. Yeah. We're gonna take a brief break. We're gonna come back with our last segment and it'll be a good one. So stick around. We'll be right back. A potential audience of more than 50 million people is reached every week by Las Vegas Tonight. To keep the important message of Christ's love on the air, we need your prayers and financial blessings. Please send your tax-deductible gift to Dale Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. For a donation of $25 or more, we'll send you a copy of Dale Davidson's new book, Las Vegas Tonight, From Sin City to Vegas Saints. You'll love these inspiring stories of Las Vegas Christians who are changing the world. Or donate to the ministry, or order Dale's book by going to vegasaints.org. That's vegasaints.org. Or call us today at 702-480-3989. That's 480-3989. God bless you. Welcome back. I'm Dale Davidson. I'm your host. This is Las Vegas Tonight. We're having a wonderful meeting with Terry Ivins, who is an author. You probably recognize her as an actress in many different things. But here she is, writing a book called The Buzz, Pointing Fingers. The first in a series of five books, you yes. said? Yeah. So particularly if you have a uh, high school age daughter, you're going to want this series. Yeah, middle school. Middle school on. Yeah. Of, yeah, yeah. Start them off as early and when they're as impressionable as possible. Yeah. I made sure why this is 110 pages is that I wanted to reach my youngest reader, which is 10, 11, 12. Oh, okay. So I cut up the first year. So that's why there's five and not four, because oh, it would make sense that every year, year yeah. right? But right. I really wanted to grab my youngest reader. Okay. Yeah. Well, that makes all the sense in the world because that's really when we do need to capture them. But it's also a time when they're questioning. Right. And and you and I were talking during the break. Uh, you had a crisis of faith, you know, because of you know things that happened in your family. Um, 
and yet you came back to Christ. Tell me a little bit about that. Mm. Well, you know, I always believed that my dad had a three-pronged connection to God. You know, he was a pastor. He was plugged And in. I only had a two-pronged connection. And when my father fell away from the church and God, I was left with the feeling that there is no God, that it was just all big crock. Right? Yeah, right? And I was in Hollywood already, so I started living the Hollywood life the way it is when it's fun in that regard, right? right yeah. Not to say it's not fun, but you can have so much fun and not live with that attitude that, woohoo, I was like hell bent on burning my wheels. Right. And uh, God protected me through it all and saved me, I believe, from myself when uh, I met my dear friend Billy Zapka who said, you know what, there's a man that you need to meet. His name is, you know, Bob Reith, and, uh, you know, he's a pastor. And I'm like, shh, yeah, whatever, I know about them, right? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> my dad. And, Been there. Right, but yeah. Pastor Bob welcomed me with open arms, and for the first time, I didn't feel judged. I didn't feel looked upon right, wrong, or indifferent. He just loved on me like a father, and I so missed my dad's love yeah. that it was just so nice you know, and more than anything, I missed at night not having someone to talk to, you know, yeah. Jesus. You know, I'd lay and pray before, you know, and talk about my dreams or whatnot. And when I turned away from the Lord, there was no one there. And I really missed my best friend more than anything. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And did you have a flash of blinding light where you realized I have to come back to Christ? Was it a gradual thing? Was what happened? Prayer from Pastor Bob um, in that moment outside of Billy's house and MFI, Media Fellowship Bible Study. But then, you know, it was a slow turn of wills, making choices for the right and continuing even on today, you know, into my daily life now. We can have seasons where we can be on fire. But where are we consistently all the time when things are frustrating, when there's a huge line at the grocery store, when someone's honking at us, or they cut us off on the freeway? Right. You know, who are we then? And how consistent are we to be the better person, to be the better self, and, and serve those that aren't even noticing that we're serving them? And that's, that's where life today is for me in my Christian walk. And I'm so thankful for people like David Robinson and Billy Zapka and Bob Reith that were there. Mm -hmm. She was like, like the way, no, no, you gotta go right, go right. Yeah, like what we're supposed to do with each other. Hold right. each other up, support each other, pray with each other. That's right. right? Sometimes yeah. just listen. Oh yeah. Cry, right? Yeah. Mourn with those who mourn, laugh with those who laugh. Mm. Really, that's... That's where it's at. Oh, yeah. No one wants to hear, well, you should have, and you know what you need to do. <laughs> well, you know, it sounds like you have sin in your life. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. My You're going thing. through a tough yeah. time and you can't pay your bills, and then you have the audacity of someone saying, oh my gosh, you know, I, I heard that she's been, you know. Those things don't help. No, no, no. They don't help. That isn't, that isn't Christ-like at all. The prayer chain was never meant to be a gossip line. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> uh, let's talk about your ministry. I think you have a terrific ministry to, to girls. Uh, are you going to go out and are you going to talk about it? Are you going to be the Beth Moore of uh, middle age, I mean, middle school and high school girls? Gosh, I guess only God will uh, open that door, won't yeah. he? I definitely have a heart for them. It's, I've been talking to kids about being their best self through America's Junior Miss program. Mm -hmm. I've been sharing my testimony in high schools and libraries and junior highs through Media Fellowship International. So this only seems in a weird way so fitting, yet yeah. it's happened even to me very surprising. That's great. I want to give everybody an opportunity to know more about how to get in touch with you and how to know more about Terry Ivins. Once again, the book is called The Buzz Pointing Fingers, book one of five. And uh, at Terry Ivins is uh, is your Twitter? Yes. And, and are you a good tweeter? Do you do it? Do you oh, I do it up? myself. Are you do kidding? Oh, Every 49er good. game yesterday? <laughs> oh, it's blown it up. <laughs> Clippers blows it up. Well, there you go. She is a sports fan. We <laughs> love her. Uh, TerryIvans.com. 
T E R R I I V E N S, terryivans.com. And people can order your book and also there are samples of your television program. Yes. There, yeah. Which is, you know, in the secular world, it's more double entendre in the title. It's called Going to Bed with Terry Ivins. But it's only because <laughs> of the time slot. Yeah. My mother shakes her head. Oh. Yeah, saying, oh, you had to do it that way. <laughs> yeah. But you kind of did, didn't you? I kind of yeah, did. Yeah, you kind of had to do it. Uh, I just want to thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, you're going to a wedding, I understand. I am. Uh, a girlfriend of yours is getting married? My sister. Your sister? My stepsister wow. at that. Wow. So my mom got remarried to this awesome guy, another drummer. Go figure. She <laughs> likes men who can keep rhythm. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Bada boom. Bada boom. <laughs> like that. And uh, you're going to be in town for a few days. Yes. Uh, good. And you're taking your daughter to... To the stratosphere. Oh yeah. my gosh. And We're going to film some of it and, oh, and air it on my show oh, on UBN radio. Oh, good. But yeah, we're going to do uh, the stratosphere uh, roller coaster. Like wow. as soon as we leave here, we're, oh, good. We're, we're going straight to the top. It is terrifying. I told your daughter that. It's a lot of fun. It's terrifying. <laughs> I hope I survive. <laughs> what a mom. <laughs> a great mom. And a great lady, a great Christian woman. Thank you so much. Terry Ivins. Thank you. Tim yeah, Bell. thanks for coming on the show. Please stick around. There's plenty more good stuff on this channel. I'm Dale Davidson, and as always, please walk with God. Hello, I'm Dale Davidson. I hope you're enjoying Las Vegas tonight. The guests we've had on the program are wonderful examples of Christians who take seriously Christ's command to love one another. In addition to the hundreds of television stations across the United States now carrying our show, we have been presented with the outstanding opportunity to bring these inspiring stories to people around the world. An international satellite network in the Russian and Ukrainian languages has asked us to provide them with episodes to be broadcast to millions. To make a gift to support this very special effort, please send your check or money order to Dale Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. To use your credit or debit card, call 702-480-3989. Thank you, and God bless you. You've been watching Las Vegas Tonight with Dale Davidson. Send your tax-deductible gifts to Dale Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117, or call 702-480-3989. Thanks for watching.